the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture, mental health to economics, relationships to life lessons. Join us each and every Tuesday on WAC 90.1 FM. The Living Room. Casual conversations on serious topics. It is now 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked on to the true nation station, WACK 90.1 FM, where we are. Culture k -k -k crazy. First and foremost, let's kick this off as we always do, all right? Must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to. Our ancestors, those that went before us, and we are not just talking about the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, the Tainos and the Kalinagos, because we all know, accept, reiterate, they say it with the chest that Columbus lied, but also to our brother in music, Tony Prescott, where the P this week stands for privacy. I like privacy. that, and we didn't even have to go anywhere, any further into that. Um, well, I, I was going to say Palo too, yeah, because I know, oh, I could I say Plymouth too. To big old thing coming up this weekend, not so. Yeah, big up Juby one time. One time. Um, guys, as a man, as an adult, there are two things that frighten me on the face of this. Earth. And this weekend, I, I, I had to face both of my fears. You had a frog. Or? There was a frog in my yard. Yes. Right. But the second fair, I opened my bathroom door, the downstairs bathroom door, and I saw a cockroach. I was like, oh, okay, let me just get the flits, you know? We cool. I sprayed this cockroach. And Mr. Cockroach started to fly. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bathroom door has been closed since Saturday night. I don't know if the cockroach is dead, but I hope if he's listening to this program right now, he has vacated my premises and is in the backyard again. Now you see, this is where you call between being stuck between a rock and a hard tree. <laughs> right? You, if you if you was not afraid of the frog, you could have put the frog in the bathroom to eat the cockroach. There's a natural remedy, dog. <laughs> and that is why you are listening to the living room on the True Nation station WACK 9.1 FM. I am DJ Aaron 868. I tell you each and every time that culture is my code alongside my bro bro with no fro but a lot of flow. Ricardo Mitchell, the social sage on the global stage. Um, real quick, we had it over to my favorite segment and probably yours as well with the best acronym on the face of the earth, WTF. Wait a minute. You're wrong, boy. It's not WTF today. Oh, I just wanted to see it. Sorry. It's Fit AF. Fit as France with France Jaliso. Faf. Fit AF. In my last segment, I would have mentioned the criminally high rate of childhood obesity in this country. So how do we get our kids fit and healthy? Well, the simple answer to that question is we have to be fit and healthy ourselves. There's a major monkey see monkey do component to kids fitness children follow examples they don't follow advice as a child my grandfathers were both avid tennis players so i played tennis as a child my father used to lift weights i got into lifting weights as a teenager my son has seen me train taekwondo pretty much since he was born so now he does taekwondo he has seen his mother and I working out downstairs in the garage and he joins us and does his own workouts. When we go to 100 steps, he comes with us and he does laps on his own. We as parents have to lead by example for our kids' fitness. Their health and wellness is our responsibility. So if you get yourself in a gear, your children will follow. Health is wealth, TNT. Invest in yours and your children's today the reason that france continues to demand the space 
and the attention and the appreciation that we have for him in the living room is because of contributions like that right parents you have a major part to play in your kids fitness based on not what you tell them but what they see you do it right the more likely to as you say the more likely to listen sorry to follow an example than to listen to our instruction right yeah. so friends thanks for bringing that up because uh we know that the child obesity in the caribbean air right here so you you uh, excel, yeah. excellent approach excellent approach especially for the fathers out here heading into um, men's health month next month even if you had what he might have to do it for yourself do it for the kids um yeah yeah really quickly as well head across to my social media pages um in well specifically my instagram page at dj era 868 if you want to get opportunity to win two tickets to take your special person to see for recent concert this weekend cardo know you are eligible for that yeah well, right yeah i remember i was an eligible bachelor a long time right that's that's what it does say anyway um short what and sweet is, short and something sweet. you're trying to tell us huh? El eligible, eligible. El- Wait, look what I'm doing myself here. Boy. <laughs> Time for let me go and drink some coffee. Yeah, well, you go drink coffee while I read the bio of our guest today, right? Brent Pereira, PhD and C, is a certified employee assistance professional and a licensed professional counselor with over 15 years' experience in Trinidad and Tobago and the United States. He's a graduate with honors in psychology from the University of the West Indies. He also holds a master's degree in clinical psychology, specializing in counseling, and a doctorate in counseling education and supervision from the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Well, I will just I, I will just stop at the educational qualifications. Yeah, well, I'm scared there because he will he will clearly see through any fractures that we have in our relationship here. And we have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Warish and the concert Woman and Vibes, the greats, is this weekend. And I mean, we can have an episode of Living Room without hearing from the lovely ladies of Warish as we welcome our guests. So, Aaron, do the, do the Warish thing it does do, and let's take it away. You did it just now, so we good to go. As advertised, um, we have with us this evening Brent Pereira, a former, well, a, a former guest of the living room. He, he used to be here before. I can't remember if it was the ladies' room then or the living room, but he was here before on WAC, so he's no stranger. So, Brent, first and foremost, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Aaron. Thank you for having me uh, in the living room. Right. Now, let me ask you probably the easiest question you're going on. Actually, no, the hardest question that you're going on get here today. We, we, we don't ease into things. We don't no, no, nah. no warm up. No. Wow. Nah. You just dive straight <laughs> in, in the living room. All right. All right. All right. We're not asking you, where's the seed? Right? Uh-huh. We're not asking you, where's the word hummingbird? We're not asking you, what's the gist psychologist? We are asking you, how are you? <laughs> See, I, 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 feel, I feel I was I was so ready. I was prepared. Like, what was coming? You know what? That is a it's a disarming question. I want to say I am I am well. I I am well. In this moment, I can say that yes. I can't speak for tomorrow or later today, but for now, I'm well. I like that answer. And judging from some of the other times, sometimes you are asked that, the other times you are asked that question, we try to answer, and I can speak for myself here. We answer in the past or in the future, but we really look at how we are in this specific moment. And, you know, that is something that we need to be mindful of, especially where we come here today to talk, but to continue our ever prevalent discussions about mental health. 
answer for the now not for then or for what comment answer for now in the moment in the moment what was that caro no 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 i i have been guilty of trying to time travel when people ask me that question you know it's either living with some form of regret or overindulgence in the past or with some anxiety about the future which might even be our ingratitude for the now so instead of trying to time travel i just take it in the moment and if i was to be asked right now yeah i would tell you i good i am i'm in a good place for now what it will take for next well we'll deal with that then cross the bridge <laughs> that you yeah, cross the bridge you're on and you uh, sir in your, like your time you, travel sorry Eh, no, 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 thank you, thank you, sir. You never have As to apologize. I, I, I want to borrow that. I mean, I, I am going to, I'm going to tell people that if somebody tells me, somebody passes, like, why, why are we trying traveling? You know, t- tell me about now. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah well, you know, Aaron will pay the guests or even feed them in the living room. So, you know, we had to get them anything that oh, they can okay. take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, noted. Okay, so, oh, he might receive that front. Okay. <laughs> And, and Aaron, um, you know, you're coming in looking like a, a Scarlet Ibis, so, you know, with the, you know, with, with the uh, 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 kind of immortal-esque finish, you know, all, all good on your side? I can't complain at all. I'm actually um, counting down. I think I have one more day at work before I head across to Tobago for their festivities. So I'm pretty good and looking forward to what is to come over this weekend. Nice, nice, nice. Well, now that we we in a space where everybody okay with the moment, you know, right? Grateful for the opportunities. Let's get into the heavy lifting. Yeah. Now, let me where to start with this one, boy. And after we had the Mali on at the start of this month, mm-hmm. I posted talking about, you know, that we should feel comfortable to go for counseling, and I was unpleasantly reminded that we live on an island. I was also unpleasantly reminded that there's about two degrees of separation between everybody now. <laughs> because I'm 100% sure Ricardo knows somebody that knows Brent. I, I could guarantee you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. That, right. that by, by 6.47 this evening, he coming up in my friend request on um, my, my friend suggestions on Facebook. That's for another reason. But anyhow. <laughs> the algorithm right. rhythm in. The algorithm. algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> right. But really and truly, we do live on an island and everybody knows somebody through somebody, right? So one of the fears that a lot of people have when it comes to visiting a therapist or a psychologist or a counselor or a social worker is, you really going and keep my business private, boy? You not going and tell Keisha down the road that I going for counseling? So Brent, let's clear this up off the bat. Okay. Is, Is counseling confidential i, I want to give a cheeky response because i want to see who you get any counseling from because that makes a difference okay 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 i, I mean okay. To, to, to be fair to be fair right mm-hmm. i cannot make i can't answer that across the board until that is constant confidential i need you know i, I need to, to i need um what they put it mean to clarify let me put it this way professional counseling yeah from a mental health professional yeah um is confidential let me put it that way now if you're just talking to um Carol, a partner <laughs> mm. right a non-professional um um, person who might because they could they could provide counsel or provide counseling i can't promise that that person what you share with that person will be held in confidence however um professional counselors i should say professional mental health profession mental uh, professional i kind of over here but mental health professionals right um are bound and, and and guided by the code of ethics of their respective fields so be it a psychologist be it a counselor or be it a social worker. Each of these professions, right, they didn't just spring up overnight. So there are 
codes of ethics, each, every one of them, I guarantee, has a confidentiality clause that we professionals are expected to adhere to. So that's why I say, if you're receiving counseling from a mental health professional, then that counseling is confidential, should be confidential. And as regardless of whether it is on an island, whether you're separated by two degrees or one degree, um, the code of ethics that guide our professional behavior requires us to keep the information that is shared or the information that is disclosed confidential with few exceptions. And every mental health professional um, is supposed to disclose what those exceptions are to you at the start of the process. So you're coming into it with your eyes open. I am supposed to let you know everything that you share here will be confidential with the exception of, and I can list the exceptions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I could, I could attest. <laughs> I could attest. Uh, I have, uh -huh. I have, I've discovered recently that in my peer group, maybe one in five people is a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, like I some kind of nexus for the community or something. And it, it works in my favor. But I can mm -hmm. guarantee you that when somebody, like I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, the friend who might counsel or provide counsel. Right? Mm -hmm. But when I direct you accordingly to a professional, I have no clue what happens after that. Nobody has come back and said, well, so-and-so call me or so-and-so schedule appointments. Like there, there's absolutely no feedback from the professional that that person has or has not taken up that option. So even the idea of, well, die my friend, I go let you know the all right. No, 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 it have nothing like that. Nothing like that happening. And I will add to that. it should be. And let me add to that as well. If you are going for counseling at a business that provides counseling all the staff that works at that establishment as well 90 percent of the time have to sign an oath of confidentiality so they as well if it's just a normal staff they are not allowed to divulge who they see entering the building also they have no access to the files of the counselors mm -hmm. so i just had to put that in this if if you know your brethren working in a place that is doing <laughs> that don't mean that they're going and be like oh you know i see car don't come for counseling last week why nah pan on that see so again so aaron you realize you are qualifying what type of counseling is confidential right and so sometimes i think people get confused about that right um and so anything that you share with a mental health professional um that is guided by the code of ethics of their profession that will be held in confidence but in addition i'm glad that you highlighted that if you go to an institution um for example i work for an institution that provides employee assistance program services i love to say the name yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, yeah this is part of the conversation yeah. okay wonderful so <laughs> Um, I'm the clinical director at Elder Associates Limited. And so I could speak for our organization in terms of, as, as Aaron alluded to, all members of staff, so all persons that are affiliated with Elder Associates Limited, we do have a confidentiality agreement that they are required to sign annually, so renewed every year. So it can't be that if I, I sign it when I come and I start to work and I forget about it, right? Outlines that whatever you see, whatever you hear, etc., within the confines of, of um, LR Associates Limited, that is held in strictest confidence. Yeah. Yeah, there so, was um, the only, the, uh, in, in full transparency, right? The one time that there was any feedback, it was of an it was an inquiry as to the potential for conflict of interest. So even that was in, uh, uh, in, in in respect for and in protection of privacy on multiple levels, and not just privacy, but also integrity of practice. So it was it was amazing to see that there are so many to the layman. We don't understand how many precautions you professionals take. To secure not just the personalities they're dealing with but the profession itself 
So I just had to put that out there. Yeah. Of course. And so I mean, let's, you know, we dance around, but let's just kick the door open, right? When it comes to, to well, uh, you know, in terms of, um, as you put it, it's not just about my personal integrity as a professional, but in terms of I represent the mental health profession overall. So psychologists, other counselors, other social workers, etc. Right. And the reason that each of these professions have a code of ethics, right? The code of ethics exists to protect clients as well as to protect the professionals in the field. And in every one of those um, code of ethics, there is a section that, that delineates how to treat with confidentiality or issues of confidentiality. And typically what it requires is there are two, um, there are two main ways that you can disclose confidential information and by the way as a client all of your information is confidential just even the fact that you come in to see me that is confidential so i can't even tell you hey i know this person or this person is coming for counseling that in and of itself is a, a violation of, of confidentiality right and i say that because later in the conversation i guess it will come around to what happens as you mentioned here on the two degree of separation when people bounce up down the road right but I don't want to preempt the conversation. So we, we, we'll come to that, right? But starting with in terms of the limits of confidentiality. So I would have mentioned that um, as, as mental health professionals, we are required to um, let the client know up front, inform them of, listen, everything that you see here will be held in strictest confidence with few exceptions, right? So one, the only way I could disclose any client information is with their written and expressed permission. Yeah, um, and so that is it. Also, in my capacity as as a as an employee assistance professional, a client has to give me permission in writing. You know what I can disclose to whom I could disclose it and when. It's not because you told me this once. I mean, forever I could disclose whatever information it is, right? So that's just even the fact that you come into counseling, right? And I guess we'll we'll kind of center it on on. Um, around because that's my main area of practice now, you know, with, with, with employee assistance programs. And I speak also like on behalf of, of um, where I work, that's a practice of, of our organization. Yeah. So without written disclosure, um, no representative, that's just not me as a professional, but no representative can disclose to somebody else any information, not even the fact that you attended a session or that you're a client of ours. So that's one, without your written express permission. Number two, now I will tell you, I don't need your permission if, if, and these, these are the conditions, right? One, if you disclose to me that um, somebody is in danger, right? So I, if I can prevent foreseeable harm and danger from befalling somebody, so you disclose to me in a content session, I go in and chop error. I know he on high street right now and I go in, oh no, 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 I, I assume. Cardo, I assume you and Aaron are, are good friends, right? I see yeah, Aaron. Um, he look a little surprised. Let's just say yeah. that, right? Yeah, and, and, and Aaron wouldn't be on high street anyway. He, he bougie, you know. <laughs> right. Bougie so, know. so we, we're just saying, right? So mm -hmm. if you were to disclose that to me, I have I have a duty to warn yeah. Aaron because I know the threat. Please. I know who it is. Please do. I, so I, in that case, I have to disclose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that, that's one. So if, if to prevent foreseeable harm from, from befalling another person, right? If you tell me about uh, a minor, yeah? So like a child that is in danger or being abused or even like a dependent adult, you know? So in those cases, so essentially it's to protect another individual from harm. In those scenarios, I will tell you, hey, based on that information you just told me, I can't keep that to myself. I have a duty to warn or to ensure that harm doesn't befall somebody else once I know of a specific threat, yeah? So that's another scenario where um, information can be disclosed. Um, or the third scenario is if um, I am subpoenaed by the court. So in other words, if I get a oh. magistrate letter saying that, I, yeah, yep, 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 that happens. So if I am subpoenaed by the court um, to disclose information, um then i have to but i do want to say in each of those scenarios right anytime as a professional i'm required to disclose confidential information without your written express permission it has to be the i don't say the bare minimum but that's what it is only what is absolutely necessary okay yeah so in the event of 
Okay, Aaron, I wouldn't make it again if it makes you uncomfortable, the analogy of how might be fall Aaron, right? If I go into this school to, to warn him about that, right? That is all I have to tell him. I don't have to go into how long I've been seeing this person counselor, what they told me about in the previous. No, or the only thing I'm going to disclose is the information that's necessary to protect Aaron. If the court subpoenas me, then I, as a professional, I will only disclose what is absolutely necessary. Yes. Yeah. I also have a duty to not let harm befall my client, you know? So I, as a professional, like I, as I say it out loud, no, wow, we're juggling a lot of responsibility. Here I am, I'm looking after, um, of course, um, the profession that I represent as a mental health professional. I am looking after my client, of course, who's in front of me. The welfare and the well-being of my client is always, you know, at the fore. And also I'm looking at the welfare of, in general, others who um, might be in danger. So it's, it's, it's quite a juggling act in the council room, it seems. Yeah. You realize, yeah, you talk about the responsibility to protect yourself as a professional and your career <laughs> yeah you won't say that that'll tell you how the idea of protecting others is priority because you don't want to lose your work <laughs> your qualifications because you tell so by so in a, under a shushu that you see somebody this that or the other no, well i get you say under shushu um that that part doesn't you know i can speak for me it doesn't it doesn't even occur um to me and that was why i started i started my response to the question about confidentiality is who you're getting the counseling from mm -hmm. yeah. so and that that makes uh uh i mean it makes such a significant difference between receiving counseling and support from a mental health professional versus um i would going by, see going by caro a, a well-meaning other person let me put it that way because <laughs> they might have been intent why, why, oh, oh, oh gosh oh god I, I tried to put it as as nicely as, <laughs> as i could you know caro have a good heart yeah yeah but he does also, he does but, but also also have a uh, sound mind so i will point you to a professional and I will always, always point you to a professional. I did have yeah. people sick of me saying or asking, have you considered speaking to somebody who went to school for this? Who has been trained to handle it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm like, you coming by me with a toothache. I'm not a dentist. I could put <laughs> you on, I could put you on to a dentist. Right? I don't have carburetor lying around my yard. If something wrong with your car, I will direct you to a mechanic. No, but but Caro, mm -hmm. let, let, let me pose as, as you bring that up. Sometimes someone's coping mechanism mm -hmm. when they're going through a stressful situation is to pour on to a friend, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For counsel. Now that's that that comes across as a healthy coping mechanism to speak to someone. It may not be a professional, but talking to someone is sometimes a healthy coping mechanism. We all know that there are negative or unhealthy coping mechanisms. If you don't know what an unhealthy coping mechanism is, I'll give an example. Using substances to suppress feelings can be an unhealthy coping mechanism. But Brent, I hear, I'm come here today to ask you the question. Even with unhealthy coping mechanisms, if I could manage, manage it well, you think mm -hmm. I could continue with my unhealthy coping mechanism? So I'll I'll give you a clinical answer to this, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like I like this I like this one. You're not going to put me. You're not going to put me in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. But yeah. so this is this is what I see, right? So usually, um, when I talk to persons, on in one hand, I feel like. We all have coping mechanisms. We all have things that work for us, some better than others, right? I think that it is unfair for me to tell you what should work for you. So I, because what works for me might not work for you, right? I think the true test of, of that I encourage people to use to evaluate your coping mechanisms, is it creating more problems for you? That is the test of it. So what I am using now to deal with this current situation, is it, I mean, 
it seems to be helpful right now, but in the long run, is it going to create a bigger problem? And I use an example of, let's say, for example, right? Some people might say, well, you know, I'll use shopping. I'll, I'll avoid, I'll avoid some right, things. Right, right. Let's go with a safe one, right? So somebody says, well, you know what? A little retail therapy, because that's what they say, right? A little retail therapy, a little pick me up. I feel better at the end of the day. That works for you with zero debt and a lot of disposable income. Me, that might have creditors banging down my door and hiding. I have this on that one name, on the other name, and a mountain of debt. Retail therapy is not, uh, is that, that is not a healthy coping mechanism for me. So I, said, I think it is personal. And so you need to evaluate what might be healthy and what might be unhealthy for you. One, I love the, I love what you just said, Brent. Mm -hmm. Two, I feel attacked when you spoke about retail therapy. <laughs> because there's a New Jersey here, one, actually. No, it's not. That, that is a New Jersey. It's not. Yeah, I feel attacked with the retail therapy, honestly. But I also right. because that that's my thing. I when I'm stressed, I like to buy shoes. And that's wonderful. No, and that is wonderful. It works for you. However, now we're trying to put your business out there, right? If your disposable income allows it to, then who says that? <laughs> oh yes. Who says that is is is, is unhealthy? You know, it it, it works. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, but what if, what it, if when Aaron's stressed, he like to buy shoes, and every time I see him in a new shoes, he asking me for a change to rally him to mountain boy. You know, come, you, you tell him you and him are always quarreling, so you want to take her <laughs> two beers, but you're gonna drink long enough that when he reach home, you know she's gonna quarrel with you. What does it come? I mean, you know, go. Is it really working? And that's what we mean by does it create a bigger problem, right? So we're a culture, I mean, yeah, lying is just part of the thing, right? And so that's the advice that people tell you, yeah, take a lime and cool ahead, knock a bear, whatever, right? Now there might be a difference with I might be able to go on and hang hang out this evening. And I, I up for work tomorrow, I taking care of my responsibilities, I taking care of my kids, da da da, right? Somebody else might go to line today and they can't catch yourself until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's what I'm saying. There is no one, I would say, I think it's unfair to say that, you know, this is healthy versus this that is unhealthy. I think each person you see about is not as clear cut as that. Now, some things are just absolutely like, okay, it, it didn't really have no, no wiggle room with that, right? Things that might right. be illegal. Once it's illegal, then that means it's creating problems for you. It has the potential to create problems, yeah? But generally, that as a rule of thumb, because I feel like once you get down into trying to debate what is with Christians, people find all kind of all kind of back excuses and you know, so I just usually keep it simple as that. Like, is it creating more problems for you in the long run? Mm. Yeah, right, right. I like that, yeah. I like that answer. That's actually that's a good answer. Um I will I'll stop buying shoes. I know that now. <laughs> Nobody says stop buying shoes, Aaron. The, yo, I mean, let me put it this way. I know you just go through them socks and them fast, and we can't have you out and about all how. You buy your shoes. You buy your shoes. Nothing nothing wrong with that, Aaron. And it's okay for somebody to comment on something without you feeling as if it's an attack or a critique of you as a person. You know? I'm just putting it out there. We can talk about things without weaponizing things. Don't feel that way. I think at some point you also need to recognize within yourself <laughs> when <sighs> wait boy, I doesn't I doesn't know what to say sometimes though. But you know you just have to recognize within yourself that sometimes the coping mechanism, as Brent said, it it will cause harm in the long run. Mm -hmm. And sometimes remember, lifestyle diseases are our thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So as much as you you think it may be a healthy coping mechanism to have that one chocolate or whatever when it's stressed, that one chocolate or two will add up. So even sometimes with healthy coping mechanisms, you need to be mindful because the Mr. Diabetes and Mr. Hypertension always are up and looking. 
See, well, again, that's why I say I am. I qualify the statements, right? Now, yeah. one one bar of chocolate for somebody who does not have um, a history of diabetic issues or family history related to that is very different to the person who is, you know, diabetic. Um, that that that's that's huge differences. So I think it really comes down to. Um, individual i guess decision making and evaluation but i do hear you in terms of looking at the long-term build up of effects but again to when i know when people will tell you i just i jump in before they tell you right you're on because they will tell you listen you had to wait out everything going everything going on at, up at some point right so i guess maybe that's why people say everything in moderation um i guess but i also say what i would recommend is um, when we think about coping mechanisms, um, it's always helpful to have, why should I only rely on one tool? You know, try to have, I mean, as many resources, as many fallbacks that I could possibly have. So when this doesn't work, bam, look, I have something else. You know, kind of diversify, yeah? And to stay at any conversation, I hope that's all right to come. Those that's are the things that counseling helps with, right? Um, because... Um, meeting with a counseling professional or the purpose of counseling is you know really how can I live a better life you know um, you know because I know one of the things people say like oh do I really need counseling I'm not mad I don't really need counseling I think I good I real good um, <laughs> um, sorry I was thinking about this this um, meme that was going wrong let's say I check all them boxes already anyway never mind um yeah yeah okay i yeah, see so you're familiar with oh, the, it. Um, oh, the, oh, the one with the, the little the dog <laughs> the dog in the room and the whole room on fire and the dog is like everything is fine this yeah. is fine I'm, everything yeah. is fine so the thing is right i feel like people tend to see counseling as an option only when things go wrong but I think that everybody could do it. I don't need counseling. Everybody needs help. Everybody could do with a little counselor. That's and I'm not just saying that for occupational security, right? That, that's not me trying to make a plug. No, I promise. I promise. I promise. Right? Um, because the 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 spirit of counseling, the really ethos of it is, how can I empower this person to live their best life, to be the best version of themselves? So I usually ask people, are you living your best life right now? And if you say no, well, then counseling can help because the idea is all. And we could, we, I think that is never a destination. It's always a process, right? So we could always improve. We could always, you know, um, um, enhance some aspect of ourselves. You know, because even if I think, well, yeah, I get this real down pack right now, real good in this area. Life changes, situations happen, and so I might realize I might need to revisit this. You know, um, last year I had this thirty, but now mm, maybe I need to, to recalibrate a bit. And so essentially, that is one of the the purposes of counseling, not just for when something is wrong, but more or less, hey, how can I improve? How can I get even better? Or as people say, I just want to get gooder and gooder. <laughs> I, 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 I love that, huh? because we try to preach in the living room that just like how it is take preventative care on your car, you should take preventative care of your mental health. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, we have to openly say that sometimes counseling may be out of reach of some person's budget. Mm -hmm. We have to openly say that and we accept that. Mm -hmm. But we reiterate mm -hmm. that they are free services which can be utilized through mm -hmm. findcarett.com as well as mm -hmm. tt connect mm -hmm. there's a right and i'm not too sure but i think truly ministry of social development as well they are yeah. so all wonderful options because that's good when, when you said that um we have to uh, we have to acknowledge that counseling might not be in the budget what kind of counseling you know so essentially, right, and this is one of the things I think that in Trinidad and Tobago, um, yes, there are many areas that we could improve on, um, but there are a number of resources available. I'm happy to hear you mention some of them, you know, um, with fine care. You know, there are resources that are available. Plus, there are a number of NGOs or non-government organizations that uh, provide counseling services and professional counseling services, right? In addition, through the Ministry of Health, through the, the regional health authorities, right? 
Um, I don't know the exact number, but um, most of the health centers in Trinidad and Tobago, um, they will have like a mental health clinic. So they have social workers, they have psychologists, they have counselors attached to these clinics where you could access free counseling services. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, um, counseling is available through the Employee Assistance Program. Many organizations in Trinidad and Tobago, in the public service, definitely, and in the private sector, um, increasingly, um, employers have recognized or continuing to recognize um, the benefits of, you know, having an EAP service, having um, services as part of the benefit package of their employees. So one of the things I always ask Christians, one of the first places to check is, um, does your workplace have an EAP program where you might be able to access services? Of course, um, you can access it through the, the employee assistance program provider that I work for, LA Associates Limited. But the, if it is, there are other EAP providers as well in Trinidad and whoever your organization um, might contract to provide those services, it helps to find that out. In addition, many EAP um, services are extended to dependents. So it's not just the employee. Um, if you are the spouse of an employee or the child or the dependent of an employee, if you're a member of the household, it means that you might have access to counseling services that are provided for by that person's employer. Yeah. So there are many ways that persons can access counseling services in Trinidad and Tobago. Come on, low count? Yes. That will be but again, I would have to say it depends on the respective um, provider. EAP benefits package that your employer, yes, that your employer um, <laughs> has to <secured laughs> with the program. Yeah, and I'll go and say that. It's not, it's not the the, the, the the provider is what the company is paying for oh, the coverage yes. that the company is paying for yeah. in right. addition to that as well i would say even if um because some persons might say i don't want to go through i don't want to go and line up in a health center for no counseling service i know people feel like that um some people say well i don't really have i mean i don't or people think this is another thing that people think well if i go to the eap then my whole office place will know that I go in for counseling. No, uh, no. Um, so, uh, as an EAP provider, we are also bound by um, ethical guidelines of EPA, the Employee Assistant Professional Association. So, the same confidentiality um, that I mentioned earlier applies. So, information will not be disclosed to your workplace. Yeah, what can happen is if you don't want to go through a workplace, you don't want to go through the public service, um, you can access um, counseling services and it might be reimbursed through your health insurance. So there's so many ways and, and options that people could look into. So I was, I start with the easiest, right? One, where you're working, talk to HR. Do you have an uh, employee assistance program as part of your benefits, right? You don't have to tell them you want to go say, hey, I just want to know this information. Who is the provider? How can I make contact with them, right? So look at the EAP. If that's not an option, okay. Um, do you have health insurance? You can access the service. What does your, your health package and your health benefits through your employer or even through your, your private health insurance? What might be covered, you know, through that? You might be able to, to get reimbursed for, for counseling sessions. And of course, there are always a myriad of free resources and options available. I, I love that. I love that. Um, anything else, Carlo? Because I know we had a wrap up with Brent now before we do our needful and handover. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I'm, I, I was. I'm thoroughly impressed by this conversation because yes, we have mental health conversations regularly in the living room, right? And we generally speak on a topic that is less um. What about it, this conversation is about an element of mental health care, right? It is not so much about an element of um, mental illness or distress. This is not one mm -hmm. of those, we're talking about domestic violence. We're not talking about addiction. We're not talking about substance abuse. We're not talking about depression, anxiety. We're not talking about those things. Those are reasons to seek mental health help. Right now, we're talking about... Uh, major misconception that people have about the service we've been directing people to 
Mm-hmm. So for, for me, it is very important that people get, we're not sending people for no cat and bag thing. And we understand the legitimate concerns that people have. I know that I have witnessed from the ground, pure layman, the, 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 the partner. I've seen over the years, people becoming more comfortable with the concept of therapy. Right? There are people who coming back afterwards and telling you, hey, well, you know, I'm finally looking into this thing. So I'm, I'm aware that the culture is starting to shift a bit. So this is us trying to do our part to reinforce the decisions that a lot of you are already quietly making. If you're concerned about your confidentiality, I hope that Brent here has given you enough reason to say that can be a reason or not going. This, this is about getting you closer to the decision that's going to mm-hmm. better benefit you. Right? Because as you see, Brent, it's about you want counseling, not because something wrong, but because you want a better life. Mm-hmm. Right? So don't feel you have to wait until the plant done dead to want to water it. Right? You know? <laughs> get up in the morning, take a little stretch, get a little fresh air, water your plants, and go about your day. Take care of your garden. Right? Mm-hmm. So, Can I add one thing to what you said, Ricardo? Sure. Yeah. So you mentioned that persons would come back and give you feedback. Like, hey, I tried that counseling thing and it was real good. Right? I also want to put out, it might have persons might come and like, nah, mm-mm, I tried that tonight. Because and let's be real, there are persons who have had less than ideal experiences, experiences. with counselors and clinicians, right? For a myriad of reasons, right? Mm-hmm. One, I come back to my question, who you went by? Mm-hmm. And by the way, I want to make it clear to persons, um, it is quite all right and is within, actually, it's not just okay, but it's within your right as a client to ask of the person, hey, what's your qualifications? What, you know, like, dig up to find that information out. That is a okay to do. And again, that's what I mentioned, mental health professionals are guided by code of ethics that say that i am required to disclose that to you it's not a secret i can't tell you too fast i know your business right because we, we enter in this relationship right so no there's a difference if you try to ask me about how long i'm married how much trying to have that's that's different right right but in terms of my qualifications that i'm required to, to answer right and respond to but i want to say as well um within um the, the the process and the act of counseling right i mentioned there are many different professionals you have counselors you have psychologists you have social workers they each have a variety of approaches and orientations to counseling and to therapy right mm-hmm. so sometimes what happens is i and i tell people i tell people this all the time every time i meet a client for the first time i say hey what today let's just feel each other out right you know i will tell you a little bit about my approach to how you know how i work you would tell me a little bit about you and we'll see if and how we can make magic together. Yeah. So just kind of ease because it has, yeah, it had to have a click. So I encourage people to shop around for a counselor or therapist. Yep. So sometimes it might, be, it is not, and I say that not because something is wrong with a counselor particularly, it just might be their approach and their style is not what I need, but it's just not a fit for me right now. And that is a okay. So don't let, necessarily one experience with a, a clinician turn you off a counseling overall you know it just might mean that that person wasn't the right fit for you as i say that the the visual that i got was your your jump on let me say the marble taxi stand yeah yeah like how the driver drive you can stop traveling no <laughs> it have more taxi on the stand you understand and not because you're, you're uncomfortable moving with that driver again mean you don't have somewhere to go. So if in your experience mm-hmm. that did not work, it is not caused to abandon the entire process. You know, it mm-hmm. try so give give somebody else a chance because you still have to get where you're going. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that initial conversation about how a clinician works, how they do what what this process, you know, how does this process unfold? The type of work that they do, that is important because it lets you as a client know, you know what? I like you. Not because I like what you're wearing or I find you talk to me nice, but your approach to this, because, and that, 
you realize that so far what i'm saying is this is the difference between speaking to a professional counselor and somebody whose heart is in the right place and means well yeah now and again in some cases the outcome could be similar right but in some cases not yeah the process is very different yeah so there's certain things i can mention and sorry era we didn't get here two degrees of separation but i'll still slip it in there right the difference is you talking to let us see okay uh, right <laughs> uh, all right yeah i, I just said right yeah um mm -hmm. so, so talking to you right as a non-professional counselor right um there might be certain things that you might not be aware of in situations or for example um how to handle if this person just tell me all their business and i talk to them and maybe casually something might slip out true no fault of you and not in a malicious way right but yeah now a professional comes so that is things that that i mean that's part of the training how do you deal with those situations how do you navigate that you know um when i see a client so there are certain rules and guidelines that go along um when it comes to well, what we call having multiple relationships and multiple relationships in the sense of like oh what do i do if my neighbor walk into my office for counseling you know like how you know or this person comes and they want counseling but uh, I went on a date with them like three years ago or like but use my friend girlfriend or my friend boyfriend mm -hmm. things like that right a professional counselor is not just based on how I feel and nothing is wrong with the well-meaning person who might just want and I think it will be okay no is a vibe yeah but the professional counselor is not just their reputation at stake but the profession has protections for um the mental health field and for the clients so they tell you how to handle and navigate these scenarios and situations yeah it's so all i hear from Brent. when i tell Ole go and talk to somebody it's not that i don't care all right i might not be equipped for what it is you have to deal with and i don't know what i don't know right mm -hmm. so if, without a love i will recommend you to a professional so thank thank you for that Brent. i'm going to save that screenshot it and let people know. I care, you know, but Brent say. But Brent say. Send them his way. Once they do stone my car. For me. <laughs> um, Brent, I want to say thank you very much for joining us inside the living room today. It was a really insightful conversation. And as I want to echo what Ricardo said, we have gone down the road of mental health on so much occasions. But for this mental health month, we chose to focus on the basics why access counseling and letting persons so that it's a safe space where nobody going to know your business and i think we have covered that inside this year's edition of mental health month where we focus to let you know that mental health is a universal right for all right so thank you very much brent thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you have a great time at the gym i didn't make it today but okay. Look, the only go put him on business in the road, and we just talk about confidential. Oh, honestly, just, I just said, Jim, you don't know. Jim could. Oh, Jim, Jim could be Jim code. Could. Exactly. Jim, Jim is cool. Jim, Jim could be cool. All right, all right, all right, all right. They also have a bad on in Woodland named the Jim. Ed, thank you very much for having me. And it was, it was, it was, it was my pleasure to, to, be, to be here. Um, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's the best that's the best detour yeah that's the best interview yeah um but yeah. uh to, to watch the way yeah. now um socials socials or contact information for your services your organization uh, if people just want to ask a question sure no problem so um elder associates limited we are we have four locations across Trinidad and Tobago. We're located at 30 Picton Street in Newtown, 53 Sutton Street in San Fernando, 43 Cane Farm Road in Tacarigua, as well as 13 Robinson Street in Scarborough, Tobago. You can reach us at 226-4325 or you can go to www.ltt.com. There you'll find all the information about our services as well as a contact us page. You could just type in um, your name and your number and somebody from our team will reach out to you within 24 hours to either provide information or to schedule an appointment. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So um hey, thanks for joining us in the living room. And Iran, I know we perilously close. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to thank you guys for spending this time with us, wrapping up mental health month. 
And this is Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage, thanking you for joining us. Remember guys, the hour class is opaque. We don't know how much time remains, so whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. Aaron? Uh, and this is your Shuri DJ Aaron 868. I tell only all the time, culture is my code. I also tell you that love is the currency, so spend some today. Let somebody know that you love them. That's why we're in red. Red is the color of love. Up next, Mr. Desmond with the big band. Keep it locked. Coming to the stage right now, we have a full choir for you and dance troupe. Voirish.